pretty cool morning. It's starting to get hot. And I've been out here stripping all these tomatoes that uh, most of them were Romans that we grew in these bags. And uh, it's unreal the amount of strain that you use, especially when you got plants growing 10 foot tall. Uh, we use this year a lot of these plastic clips that are uh, really handy. They work really good. It looks like we're going to get to use some of them again. The sun didn't didn't bust them up. Just a little clip that clips together and holds them and you can actually undo them. And they work really well, especially when you can, like this one right here on this wire, when you can go around something like that right there, it works, it works really good. They're easy. I got them from Amazon. And they come from Amazon. And of course, on, when you're using on lumber like we did this right here, you have to use string. And uh, we'll you reuse, I'll cut a lot of this off, undo it, untie it, and use it again. Now, I want to give you an idea of the kind of root system that we grew inside these little containers. And they're made, what, what material is that they're made out of? I done forgot. They're uh, there's some kind, some some kind of, of cloth. cloth. I can't remember. Some type of thick cloth. But I got them from Amazon, so you can get on there and you can read what kind of cloth they are. I done forgot. They come in five gallon and ten gallon. We put two plants to the five or the ten, and I want y'all to look at the root system. Now these plants grew over ten foot tall, and that's not necessarily a good thing to me, but it showed how healthy they were doing. I'd rather have a plant that don't get over six foot tall. But anyway, that's the kind of root system that these containers put on them tomato plants, which is very good. I'm going to pull some here, and we're going to see what kind these are got. We're going to see what kind root system these plants have got. Look here at that tap root. That thing went plumb to the bottom of the bag. That's wood chips and mulch. Yeah. Topsoil, some of our own topsoil that we made. I want you to look at there. Yeah, That's the kind of root ball. system you want on a tomato plant. Take, take. You can gather all the water it needs when you water them. That. That's the only thing about growing in these bags. You may have to water more often than you would. Now that was in the five gallon bag, wasn't Them it? two right there were in the five gallon bag. Yeah. They come in a, out of a five gallon bag. Yeah. Another thing about these bags, you can move them around. When your plants are young and you decide you want them plants somewhere else, you can move them. Or if you got early plants growing in there, it's fixed to come a big frost. You can move them inside your, under your porch or something pretty easy. The five gallon ones are handier than, you know, but you know, these here are still movable. Even the 10 gallon. Here's one down here in the five gallon. I'm gonna pull it up and see what it's got. I want you to look at the look at there at the tap roots on that plant. And they done really well. Done really well. So that gives you an idea of what you might grow in a container. And like I say, I mean that's and the, another good thing is we can dump that dirt. We'll probably dump it somewhere, and then we'll amend it all winter. And then we'll... Use you can again. fold the bags up out of your way, and then we'll use the bags again. They claim that them bags will last five years. We're going to see. We've, we've got one season with them, and so far we really like them. I don't know how you could get a better root system than you got right there on a tomato plant and uh, especially in a container huh especially in a container it's it done really well so we experimented with the shade, uh, shade tunnel and it done really well on certain plants uh, we've learned a few things but we're fixing to take it off we done started taking off the other end uh, these tomato plants in here are mostly done and I'm removing all of them We're gonna take this off and we're gonna get our fall garden completely planted and uh, 
We may end up putting some plastic over it. We don't know for sure yet what we want for sure we're going to do. But we, well, Last year we used the row crop covers that yeah. grew us so much. So it worked very well. We're not sure if we'll just do that or, or cover it with plastic and use the row crop covers. Depends on what kind of winter we're going to have. But yeah, this shade cloth's coming off. Now we still have some pretty decent tomatoes. Yeah, we got some that we planted planted at later in uh, July, I believe it was. And of course they're wanting to grow tall. They're growing upward, but we got several green tomatoes. I picked several green tomatoes this morning. We have to, may have to make some pickled green tomatoes or fry some of them up. I'm thinking about frying some up. Now see, we've got one plant up here on <laughs> that come through the come through the shade tunnel and it is just absolutely covered with green tomatoes i'm gonna leave it right now it's still pretty well alive and i'm gonna leave it hoping they ripen i'll have to get up there and get them if squirrels don't get them our squirrel problem has slowed down a lot still got several but it's slowed down we had tomato worms hit us just as a hurricane laura was coming in and it rained for several days and meanwhile, the tomato worms hit our tomatoes pretty hard. And we couldn't get out here and, and we used some natural chemicals and any kind of chemical, it wouldn't matter, uh, preventative to get rid of them, N not to even mention coming out and gathering them off. It rained, it rained, it rained, and the tomato worms had a feast during that time. Uh, we come out and I got 20 something worms off one day during the rain and it just, it was unreal when they hit, how hard they hit. We got some mustard greens coming up. And I want you to look, the bugs are hitting my sweet potatoes again. You know, they had eased off a little bit, but sweet potatoes, the plants are starting to die, so. And my green beans that I planted late, the bugs are hitting them, the leaves on them, so I've got to do something before they just eat the plants plumb up again. My butter beans back there on the vine are doing really good, and there's a few blooms, but I'm going to have to doctor them all because the bugs are just eating the leaves. That's all, that's all happening during the rain. Been wet, wet, wet. Our pepper plants are starting to take off. They do so good in the fall. Plant yeah, here. I don't understand why, you know, here on this hill, they do better in the fall than they do in the summer. They really do good in the fall. And a tomato worm got on this one and ate several blooms off of it. I found him. They like pepper plants too. I can see the top leaves are starting to curl. I need to uh, fertilize them. A little bit. That's another one of them late tomato plants. Got several good tomatoes on it. They should ripen. It's still trying to bloom, but them blooms ain't gonna make it. They won't never make it for frost. But where the tomatoes are, they should make us some good eating mm -hmm. fresh tomatoes. So you see that we have a regular hornworm here, or a tobacco worm, or a tomato worm. I believe there's actually two kinds. They look a lot alike. There is some subtle differences of them. We have a regular one, and then we have one that has little white, looks like eggs all over him. And that is from a Brackenen wasp. It is a hornworm's natural enemy. He's a wasp, a Brackenen wasp. And his wasp lays eggs inside this hornworm. And uh, there's a, po a poison in there with this that makes the hornworm slow down. So he basically starts where he don't even eat, but he's still alive. 
and these lava or larva comes out of the hornworm and they form a little they cut a little hole and they, as they come through and you see how many little white that that's a web that's a cocoon little bitty cocoons and each one of them little bitty cocoons is one of these wasps are going to hatch so as that worm he's going to die that's their natural enemy as he dies these wasps are going to hatch and they're going to go look for some more worms so if you find one of these worms that has these little white looks like little eggs all over it don't kill it you can remove it from your tomato or whatever it's on move it off the side put it somewhere else but don't smash it and smash all that up because you'll be killing them wasps that will help you take care of the hornworms <laughs> it just looks so gross but we can't kill it <laughs> it's really gross looking <laughs> it may be gross <laughs> But if nobody's never seen that before, it's not something you see every day. I had. I've seen it several times since we've lived here. I have found them like that. But uh, <clears throat> it's just nature's way of helping control the tobacco worm or the horn worm or the tomato worm. Of course, you know when I see one, I can't, I can't touch it and I can't get it off. So I either make you do it or I break the whole limb off. To get it off. Yeah. Come and help me get this worm off. <laughs> well, that was very interesting. I'm going to be reading a few scriptures tonight and doing a little bit of talking about God's Word. I love to teach and read God's Word. We're going to start off in John chapter 1, verse 12. But as, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. But as many as received him, those that believed in Jesus Christ, believe in his name, that he is Christ, who were born, I want you to remember the word born, who were born, not of blood, not of the will of flesh, nor of man, but of God. They were born. So we want to see how they were born. We're going to go to John chapter 3 to see what John's talking about. John chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, now he's talking to Nicodemus. He answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, I assure you, Nicodemus, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again. So there's that word again, that it's born, born again. He says, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now Nicodemus said to him, how can man be born when he is old? So you see, Nicodemus is thinking about flesh. He's thinking about worldly things. He's thinking about flesh. And we just read that you can't be born in the first chapter of John. We just read that who are born, but not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of man. It's not because of man, but of God. So Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered him and said, Most assuredly, assuredly I assure you, Nicodemus, 
Um, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So how do we become born of the Spirit? He talks here about, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit. So let's go over here to Acts 2.38. And this is Peter talking here. He tells us what we must do. Then Peter said to them, Repent. And let every one of you be baptized. There's where your water comes in. Baptism. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins. We also can go over here to Mark 16.16. 16, and it says, He who believes. Of course we have to believe that he is Christ. We have to believe there's a God. Mark 16, 16, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who don't believe will be condemned. So you see that Jesus talks about being born again. And how are you born again? You're born again through baptism. You enter into the spirit, the immersion of water, And it's very important that we follow God's word and what he teaches us. You're born again. How are you born again? Through baptism, immersed in water, receiving the Holy Spirit, coming up out of the water to walk in newness of life. May God bless every one of you.